Hey everyone, it's Moise here from Remax Impact Realty. I hope you're doing well. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of how to purchase a new build or a pre-construction home. And this is also an amazing way to avoid bidding wars. Stay tuned. So once again, folks, my name is Moiz Rahman. You may call me Mo if it's easier. I'm a full-time real estate agent with Remax Impact Realty across the Durham region and the GTA. As the resale real estate market across the Durham region and the GTA continues to get harder by the day, many homeowners are looking to invest their savings into a pre-construction or new build project. While pre-construction can be an amazing, amazing investment, they are trickier to navigate and locating deals is not as easy as it may seem. So let's begin with the first and most important step in purchasing a pre-construction unit and that is the deposit structure. In order to purchase a home anywhere in Ontario, you are required to have a minimum of 5% of purchase price to qualify for a mortgage. If you've been following me on this channel, then you know that a minimum of 5% is the entry level to apply for and qualify for a mortgage. However, it is not the same structure for when it comes to new builds. Builders generally require 15 to 20 percent of purchase price towards the deposit. One of the reasons a builder requires a much higher deposit is so they are able to fund the cost of construction. Now, this 20 percent is not required at the time of signing. It's actually spread out to make it easier for you and more flexible to make the payments. So here is a sample of an existing deposit structure in one of the projects being offered right now in Pickering. They are asking for $5,000 on signing, the balance to 5% in 30 days, 3% in 90 days, 3% in 180 days, 4% in 365 days, 4% in 720 days, and the final 1% on occupancy. Please note that it is not impossible to find projects that are asking for less than 20%. Every once in a while, depending on the market as well, of course, there are builders who ask for a 5, sometimes 10% deposit. Now, these are very rare to come across, and when they do become available, they usually sell within hours, and the public may not even get a chance to submit their application. Now that we are familiar with the deposit structure, let's help you analyze whether the project is within your budget. Arranging the deposit is step number one. If you've surpassed it, congratulations. Step number two is to ensure that you can qualify for a mortgage upon completion of this unit. For this example, let's presume that you are purchasing a home or a condo for the price of $800,000. You already now have or you intend to have the 20% of purchase price towards your deposit ready within your account. In this scenario, that is $160,000. This means that upon completion of the project, which is three to four years down the road roughly, you will have to take out a mortgage for $640,000. Do you know if you can comfortably qualify and carry the mortgage for that purchase price? If you don't know, I highly recommend you speak to a mortgage broker or rep before beginning your search for a new build. I highly recommend speaking to them in person and exchanging your documents rather than relying off of an online qualification tool. The mortgage broker will analyze your credit report, employment status, income verification documents, and a few other documents to better tell you with confidence if you qualify for a mortgage at that loan amount. If you do not qualify, the mortgage broker can better guide you on what you can do during the coming years before completion to be in a better position to receive your mortgage upon completion of your new build unit. Not only is this a highly recommended practice, a lot of builders now demand a letter of pre-qualification from the mortgage broker before they sell you a unit. It's a little bit more tedious, but on the brighter side, it does protect you because in the event you are unable to get mortgage and you are unable to close three to four years down the road on completion day, you will have to forfeit your 20% deposit. The next step is finding the best deal. 
Finding a good deal in pre-construction or new build projects is not as easy as it may seem. While all the information is available to you online, it is not as simple as filling out a form and then getting units allocated to you. Builders sell their project in phases. Phase one is usually a friends and family launch during which the units are sold within the company. Second is the pre-launch sales event. VIP agents or VIP brokers who have a previous history of helping this builder sell their units will get first-hand access to the project. Third is the launch phase. First come, first serve basis. Usually clients with a VIP agent find success within this phase as they already have information from the pre-launch phase. That's because the VIP agents already have the information from the pre-launch phase. Fourth is remaining inventory. This is open to public and that is where you will get a response if you had filled out that form. So a few things, the best units that have the best view, higher floor, premium lot, walkouts, all those deals are usually sold in the first two phases. Working with a real estate professional or real estate broker who has VIP access to these projects is super beneficial. If you are able to secure a unit that has those types of features, walkout lot, corner unit in a condo, penthouse, bigger terrace, these types of upgrades have never ending demand specifically because you cannot add them upon completion, you have to get them before. Also, if the builder is successful in selling their units in phase one to three, which usually they are, when the project goes to phase four and it opens up to the public, the prices usually do go up because the demand was tremendously high in the first few phases. Now the project is still probably an amazing value even after the price increase. However, there is no harm in getting a better deal, right? So the next step I urge you to look into when buying a new build or a pre-construction unit is to figure out how to maximize the value of your investment. Congratulations, you were able to secure a unit hopefully in the first one or two phases at a really good price. Now, what more can you do with this purchase to really maximize its profit? In a condo, you may look for features like terrace, a bigger size of the terrace, views, mid unit versus corner unit, higher floor versus lower floor, ceiling height. In a home, it can be walkout basement lots, ravine lots, corner lots, the ceiling height, and the basement height for when you want to finish the basement. These are the type of upgrades that might be available to you at the time of purchase. However, they do come at a premium cost. In my opinion, these types of upgrades are evergreen and it is worth the cost. These types of upgrades cannot be added after the completion of the home. That makes these upgrades forever hold its value. Getting a walkout basement might entice the purchaser to pay twenty to thirty thousand dollars more than market value to secure your home as it is a super unique feature. The next step is understanding the cooling off period. Upon the acceptance of your offer and the delivery of the first initial draft, the builder grants you 10 business days known as the cooling off period. During that time, you are given the contract, the agreement of purchase and sale to review. Now, many times builders have a very lengthy agreement. If you are unable to go through it yourself, you are urged to get a lawyer's review. It's only $150 to $200 to get a lawyer to review the contract with you to point out the notary mentions. If for any reason you are unsatisfied with the project during that 10 day cooling off period, you are able to send the builder a mutual release and step away from the deal and get your initial deposit back in full without any interest deductions. Please note, not all builders offer the 10 day cooling off period. While most builders do, some really don't. And as the activity and demand for new build is increasing, a lot of builders are waiving that and they're only allowing you 24 hours to firm up on the purchase, very similar to resale. In the event, you only have 24 hours to make your decision, to streamline the process for you, to take away a bit of your anxiety, I recommend you look for the following items in your contract. Are assignment sales permitted? What are the development charges? What are the levy costs? If and which appliances are included? Which finishes are standard? How much is Terion warranty? 
Are there any lawn driveway paving charges that I should be aware of? These are charges that are usually payable by the purchaser on closing day. These changes are quite standard and as the purchaser, it's nice to know ahead of time what these costs might be. Oftentimes, the sales staff at the sales center are not aware of these costs. They're merely just showing the benefits of the project. It is on the purchaser and the purchaser's agent if they have one to be aware of these costs. The next step is understanding interim occupancy. When the condo is built and ready to be moved into, there is a period of interim occupancy where the buyer can take possession, in other words, move into the unit. During the period of interim occupancy, the buyer does not own the condo or the unit just yet. They simply pay the builder an amount roughly equal to what their mortgage might be. No transfer of land has yet occurred and no mortgage has yet been given. And the final step required in purchasing a new build is understanding the HST. With the purchase of a new build, HST on the purchase price is due and payable from the purchaser. However, if you are an end user and you intend to live in this unit, you then qualify for HST rebate. If you desire to sell your new build unit within the first year of completion, you do not qualify for the HST rebate. If you desire to sell after a year upon completion, then you can qualify for the HST rebate. So folks, there you have it. How do you purchase a new build or pre-construction unit? I hope you found this valuable. Now my team and I have been selling real estate for many years and we have helped many families from investors, youngsters, young professionals, and individuals who want to grow their real estate portfolio purchase and secure good deals in new build projects. During our years of work, we have built a really good relationship with the top builders in our area. Because of that, we usually get access to projects before they even go on the market, if not as soon as they go on the market. If you would like more information or you would like to have us represent you, my email is in the description below. You can reach out to me directly. Over the next few weeks, I will be posting two more videos. For one, the pros and cons of new builds. Secondly, what common mistakes to avoid when purchasing a new build. I know many of you have heard the success stories of purchasing new build homes. There's also a few horror stories and as long as you're sure to avoid those mistakes, you will not have a horror story. So make sure you subscribe and you stay tuned for the next content. My name is Moise Rahman with Remax Impact Realty. I'll see you on the other side. Thank you so much for watching the video. Here are a few more videos that you can watch. And if you haven't already, please go to my caption, find the link and subscribe to my monthly market newsletter by email. I personally put that newsletter together myself to make sure it's fully engaging, has all the information you need and my clients absolutely love it.